All right, welcome back, AIS third graders. Today we are going to be continuing on with creating our masterpiece. We have already finished our little handout of creative movements. You've already created a mini masterpiece on your little paper, and I kind of lost where I put mine. Here we go. <laughs> so a little mini masterpiece, and this one you could probably take home, because I don't always let you take your art home. So you've completed these both things. Your next step in your, we're going to call it a wheat field inspired starry night creation by um, with Vincent Van Gogh's strokes as our inspiration. You're going to think about what color paper you want to use as your background. And you, we have all the colors. We have warm colors and cool colors. Um, so you're going to pick that. You're going to decide. Usually for the landscape, we'll use it in landscape version. Um, but if you wanted to, I don't see why you couldn't try it in the portrait style. But you're first going to decide on your paper. For this one, I used blue. And on the one up on our exemplar board, I think that one was purple. For this demo, I'm going to use yellow. On the back, as soon as you pick your color, you want to put your name teacher's name and it's always nice to put your table color just in case it gets lost. So do that and then put it aside. We're then going to grab our sheet. It's called Roll a Masterpiece and get another sheet of paper the color of your table. This is just like kind of like your scratch pad. Get a dice and we're going to roll our five. We're going to try and use five different types of lines. So if we look at our inspiration here, and it could be the starry night, night piece, or it could be this um, field that he has done, you'll see that he's used curved swirly lines. He used some very short lines. Again, a lot of curved lines that he has used in this piece some thick lines and some thin lines. So kind of look at the, uh, think about the different types of lines, thin, thick, um, some very jagged lines. So we're gonna think about all the different types of lines. We're also gonna think about the three different sections we wanna have in our landscape. We wanna have a foreground, something that's very up close. So in this case, it's the tree, the grass line, and then of course this gorgeous tree. The middle ground, he has these little mountains. So you might not know that they're mountains, but reading the description, they're mountains. And then his background is this gorgeous sky that has lots of movement. So we're gonna think about that. So we're gonna create those three different sections in our painting. So, but first we're gonna try and decide on which types of strokes we wanna use. And so getting your scrap paper and your dice, you're gonna roll it five times. So the first roll, I had a four. So if I look on my first roll, so this is my roll number one, and I rolled a four, it says thick and rough lines. So taking an oil pastel, and for the thick and rough, I would use the back. I'm just going to create some rough lines. So I created my rough lines. I'm gonna roll again, three. So my second roll, I'm going to do a three, and there they are these little short strokes. So again, you could pick another color and just do some short strokes and roll again. So you're gonna roll five times and you'll eventually hopefully have five different types of lines, either in the same color or different colors. So it doesn't matter if you use the same color oil pastel or different colors, kind of have fun with this. So this is kind of like your visual, so that you can see the different types of lines that you can use. On your table, you'll have lots of different handouts to help you. We have a step-by-step -step on how to draw the foreground, adding the horizon line, the middle ground, having your mountains, and then the background will be your sky. You also have this handout here. I don't want you tracing it, but you've got some handouts to use. And then this one, of course, is from Starry Night. We are not going to add a village, but we're going to add pumpkins, or you can even add a little animal if you want. You can put butterflies in the sky. It's really your creation. What we really want to take away is the different types of lines that will create a sense of movement. So, looking at your resources, we're going to first work on the foreground. So, I'm going to look and draw my foreground first. And I think I'm going to do, 
I'm gonna try and draw really heavy so you guys can see. So I'm going to create a little wave. I'm gonna make a tree and I'm just gonna kind of make it zigzaggy. Again, it doesn't have to look realistic. So here's my tree. I'm then going to add, remember where I want to use pumpkins. So I'm going to put a big pumpkin in the foreground and it doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm drawing my pumpkin and it's nice to have some overlap. So right here I don't have any overlap so they look like they're at the same distance. So it's always fun to add a little bit of overlap so that it looks like something is in front of or back so it moves a little bit. So I'm going to add another pumpkin back here so a little further back in the foreground. Okay, and I think I'll add, hmm, I'll add another pumpkin over here. So kind of play around with your design. I think I'll put a pumpkin here, a big one. So again, this is just my foreground. I've added pumpkins, a tree, okay, so very rough. And then in the middle ground, I think I'm gonna add maybe some mountains. Again, just basic lines. And then in my sky, I'm gonna think about um, clouds and you can even just use some good lines here. We're gonna try and add some movement. And if you wanna draw the sun, I'm gonna put the sun right in the center. So I think my sky is going to be, uh, the sun is gonna be setting soon. So I'm gonna think about that and use maybe oranges and reds in my sky and a, just a little bit of blue, maybe some white for my clouds. So this is my outline. Once you have it outlined, you're then going to look at the paper that you used with your lines. So you try to create overlap if you can. Again, I think I'm gonna put some more pumpkins in the background. So I'm gonna add some more pumpkins back here and I'm gonna put them behind this bush or tree. Um, I think I'll overlap my pumpkins. Overlap again kind of helps with judging space. You can even put some bushes here. So again, if you drew lightly, like I could erase this line can add some bushes okay and then after you have gotten your design down the way you like it now you're gonna start laying in your color so we're going to start thinking about the color choices and again I had already said I'm gonna think about having mine as sunset so I'm gonna kind of pull out my sunset -y colors I can put the dice away I shouldn't hear the dice being rolled all over and in art, it's a lot of times it's nice to start at the top and work your way down. That way your arm doesn't get all in your artwork. So starting at the top, I'm going to go with white clouds. So I'm gonna start with white. And if you need to clean your pastel, you're gonna use it, a paper towel. So I'm just going to go over some of my circular lines and I look like I pick some dashes so I'm going to make some dashes. I'm gonna overlap a lot. These are gonna be my clouds. So I'm using some of those lines. I'm going to maybe add a little bit of blue in my sky. And another set of my lines that I used was those thick lines, okay? So I'm gonna use the back of my pastel and kind of just make some short little lines just so that we see a little bit of blue. And so I'm gonna put the blue up high because as the colors, as the sun starts to set, the colors we notice more at the horizon line. So I'm overlapping using some fun colors. And then I'm gonna start adding some of my little um, other colors. Now granted my paper is yellow, but I'm still gonna use a yellow oil pastel. Again, looking at the color, at the lines, I have some wavy lines, some dashes, some long lines and short lines I can use. So I'm gonna outline first my sun and I'm gonna use long and short, long and short, long and short. And I'm just gonna kinda go around until I get it kinda filled in. I'm gonna change colors and kinda repeat. 
What's really cool about oil pastel is when you lay th something on top of something else, it just naturally blends. You don't have to really blend it with your finger at all um, or even a paper towel. It's just going to naturally kind of blend with just the strokes that you're going to make. So I'm just going to fill in my sun. And I'm going to add some yellow here. And again, you can leave some of the yellow paper out. Around my sun, I'm going to radiate some color. So again, I'm going to make some little dashes. Again, if you didn't want to roll the dice, you could just kind of even look at all the different types of lines on your paper here. So have that as a reference so you're going to say, oh yeah, thin lines, thick lines, skinny lines. If you want to use skinny lines, you're going to use an edge. So I'm just going to use the edge to make a skinny line. Okay, so I'm going to radiate that color. I'm going to add some more white in my sky for my clouds. I'm going to now start to move down. So I'm going to work on my mountains. I might even grab some brown. And I'm kind of going fast because I want you guys to have time to work. So I'm going to use just some long... I'm going to use some long solid lines. And then I'm going to repeat. And mountains sometimes have trees in them, right? Now I'm going to use some nice flat lines, some rough and long lines. So that would be the line three under two. So kind of look at the different types of lines and really kind of have fun with the the movement. Again, your paper is going to show through. I'm going to add some green. Again, I'm going to still stick with working with the back of my green. And when my green and my brown mix, it's going to look pretty cool. So again, you're going to work from the top down. That way your arm doesn't get smeared. And you don't smear your oil pastel. You can use black, but we'll use black last. And that way we can really make sure that we don't get too messy with our black. I think I'll even add some more of this green. So I'm really just having fun laying in color, getting texture. And I don't have black right here, but I'm going to use some purple to get some darkness, some shadows where the mountain is receding behind another mountain. Okay. And then for the tree, again, depending on if you think this is the base of the tree, and then these are the branches. And then you can, of course, add a bunch of green. So I'm, now I'm using verticals. You can either, if you want the tree to be moving, you could even do a bunch of swirlies. Okay, so I want you to just really have fun working with lines, trying to get the idea of take a moment and kind of sit back and look at it before you keep going. In the end is when we'll use our black, and I don't think I have black in any of these, and we'll go over some things, so we'll outline, like we'll eventually outline our bush or our tree so that we really can see where it is and really have fun. So again, this is just the beginning of my piece but you really want to look at the different types of lines that you can use and really have fun creating movement and texture using these oil pastels. So I'll continue working on this while you guys are starting yours and we'll just kind of wait to see it pop um, as we finish. So again I've worked first on our background then I started to the middle ground and last I will work on the foreground and again that way I'm not having my arms smear any of my cool images and artwork. So enjoy working on your field of pumpkins with a starry night type sky and we're just really looking for movement and texture using oil pastels and being inspired by Vincent van Gogh. Enjoy!